Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the word. Um, and this, uh, sometimes I wear different hats different days uh, to help distinguish between the episodes that I'm recording. And you'll notice the hat today I got because I'm a big fan of Krispy Kreme donuts, especially when they're fresh off the uh, little assembly line thing they have. Um, and so we went there this past week and, uh, well, they gave me a hat because I'm so in love with that there. Krispy Kreme donuts. You know, when you eat them, they're like, they melt in your mouth. They're that fresh. I'm like, oh, that's good. Anyway, let's move on. We're talking about Joshua here. Joshua uh, chapter 7, I'm talking about three reasons for defeat here. And this was the three reasons they were defeated in AI. Uh, but it also applies to our lives in reasons that we're defeated uh, when we're battling against uh, sin and the enemy. All right. A lot of this uh, information that I get today is taken uh, for the next three episodes here. Actually, the five episodes um, is from Victorious Christian Living. Um, this book here, um, Alan Redpath is the, the the writer of it, and it's stories of the or studies of the Book of Joshua. He's a minister. It was a minister. He, he's passed away, um, but he wrote uh, some sermons many years ago, and then they were published into. A book like this okay so I'm reading uh, this book a lot for for this series and then Francis Schaeffer's book Joshua and the flow of biblical history uh, they're both great books so I encourage you if you can get get a hold of them read them this book it's funny uh, when you look at it it has on the, the cover I buy them used you know um, on the cover it says to you Betty your for, for your faithful service each Tuesday working on our Sunday school records uh, from uh, North LB Brethren Church, 1963. Okay, someone gave this uh, gave this uh, book away to Betty in 1963, and now I have it. Back in 20, uh, uh, in the date of 2024. <laughs> How great is that? Anyway, uh, three reasons for defeat today. I want to talk about prayerlessness. This was the second reason they were defeated. We talked about yesterday how they had the self-confidence. They were all confident in themselves, uh, which should not have been. They should have been confident in the Lord, uh, but they took their confidence in themselves like, oh, look, look how great we are. Okay. But I want you to notice here in this whole story, they don't ever stop and pray until it's like, um, until they've been defeated. And then it's like, oh no, we, we need to spend time with the Lord. Okay. But you need to spend time with the Lord before you go into battle, not after you're defeated in battle. Of course, you should do that if you're defeated in battle. But spend time with the Lord before you go to battle. And so that's what I wanted to point out here today. This is going to be taken today from Joshua chapter 7, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 11. But pay close attention. You will never see any point where they go, oh, let's go spend some time in prayer before you go into battle. Verse 1, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Camri, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took some of them, so the Lord's anger burned against Israel. There, He's referring to, they took things in the battle of Jericho that they were not supposed to take. They weren't supposed to take anything at all. They were supposed to destroy everything, and then there was a few items that were to be taken and put in the Lord's treasury, but they were to keep nothing. And that's the first battle. If they would have went through the first battle and done everything the Lord said, the next battle, including this battle here that we're coming to at AI, they could have everything. Okay, It was like they could plunder everything. But this guy could not wait. Verse 2. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to AI, which is near Beth Haven, uh, to the east of Bethel, and told them, Go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out AI. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about only three thousand went up, but they were uh, routed by the men of Ai, who killed about thirty-six of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gates as far as the stone quarries, and struck them down on the slopes, as at this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. It wasn't until this point that Joshua goes and seeks the Lord. Okay, Before that, there's never any record of him seeking the Lord. Now, he's seeking the Lord. 
The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you, you, why did you ever bring the people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. And I pointed this out yesterday. This is like a foolish thing to be saying. This is exactly the same thing the Israelites were saying way back when they were coming into the Promised Land. Now Joshua is saying this. Uh, he's crying out like, why are we doing this? Verse 8, pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other peoples of this country will hear about this and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? The Lord said to Joshua, stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things they have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. Okay? I'm stopping there. Um, because that points out the the reason they were defeated was the prayerlessness. You see, they never spent time to pray, except when they were defeated at that point. Okay? Which we should be praying if we're defeated. But we need to be spending time with the Lord in prayer long before the battle starts. Okay? And so that's the, uh, the issue that happened there is they weren't spending time with the Lord. They weren't seeking God at all. He went and sent out, Joshua went and sent out the spies, but it doesn't ever say he sought the Lord. Okay. And remember in Jericho, he was talking with Jesus there before. And Jesus was giving clear, uh, um, you know, as a the, uh, theophany um, when, when you're speaking to Jesus in the Old Testament. And... Um, it's Jesus was actually speaking to him, telling him what to do. Okay, in this battle, he doesn't seek uh, God at all. Um, he just goes and sends out the spies, and, and you know, goes out all self-confident, but then does not spend time in prayer. So I encourage you, before you go into battle, before you have an issue at work or, or whatever you're doing with the family, spend time in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Lord God, thanks for this time we can be together. I pray that we would be a people that would spend time in prayer uh, long before the battle starts and that we would spend time with you daily in prayer and throughout the day uh, seeking you with ever, whatever uh, is coming ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for watching. I am a regular dude walking in the Word, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey through the book of Joshua, specifically looking here at Joshua chapter 7. Lord's blessing. I'll see you then.